Now that we are done with the first part of the fundamental integration formulas, we are going to proceed with the second part, which are the logarithmic and the exponential functions of the integrals. This is the third part for our next video that is all about the trigonometric functions. And so, for example, we are going to integrate the integral x dx over 1 minus x squared. And so first, we have to differentiate our denominator. So that is negative 2x dx. Our numerator lacks negative 2, so we have to balance it outside our integral sign. That is, we have to add negative 1 half outside. So that is negative 1 half times the integral of negative 2x dx over 1 minus x squared. And then since our differential is the differential of our denominator, we can use the logarithm or the natural logarithm. So that is negative 1 half ln of 1 minus x squared plus c. Second example, the integral of the quantity u squared plus 1 squared over u cubed dx. So first, we are going to expand this binomial. So the result for that will be u raised to 4 plus 2u squared plus 1 times du over u cubed. And then distributing our denominator to our three terms for our numerator. So that is u raised to 4 divided by u cubed du plus 2 integral of u squared over u cubed du plus the differential of u over u cubed. And so we can simplify this by dividing our variables and then subtracting our exponents. So that is the integral of u du plus 2 integral of du over u plus integral of u raised to negative 3 du. And then using the power formula for u du and then using the natural logarithm for du over u and then using also the power formula for u raised to negative 3. That is equal to u squared over 2 plus 2 ln of u minus 1 over 2 ra uh, minus 1 over 2u squared plus c. Next example, that is the integral of tangent of x dx. And since according to trigonometric functions, Tangent of x is equal to sine of x over cos of x. If we are going to derive our denominator cosine x, that will be equal to negative sine x. So, we, we must put negative sine to our numerator. At the same time, we have to multiply our integral by negative 1. So, that is negative 1 times the integral of negative sine x over cos x dx. And then using the the natural logarithm that is negative ln of cosine x plus c. Number four, integral of dy over e raised to y, transposing our denominator to our numerator and then making our exponent to negative. So that is e raised to neg negative y. If we are going to derive our numerator, that should be negative dy. So we are going to put negative here and at the same time, we are going to put negative 1 outside of our integral sign. So that is negative 1 integral of e raised to negative y times negative dy. And then simplifying, making our exponent here positive. So that is negative 1 over e raised to y plus c. Number 5, integral of z times e raised to 4z squared dz. And so first, we are going to derive our exponent here in order to use the exponential formula of integrals. So the integral, so the differential of 4z squared is 8z dz. So we, we lack 8 as our constant here inside our integral sign. And then we are going to balance it by 1 8 outside the integral sign. So that will be 1 8 of integral of e raised to 4z squared times 8z dz. And then using the exponential formula, that will be 1 8 of e raised to 4z squared plus c. 
sixth example that is e raised to 2 theta times d theta over 1 plus 3e raised to 2 theta. And so if we are going to differentiate our numerator here, that will be equal to 6e raised to 2 theta d theta. And so we lack 6 here as our constant and so we are going to balance by 1 6 outside our integral sign. So 1 6 times the integral of 6 e raised to 2 theta d theta over 1 plus 3 e raised to 2 theta. And then using the ln, that is 1 6 ln of the quantity of 1 plus 3 e raised to 2 theta plus c. Seventh example, that is the integral of e raised to 2 t dt over 1 plus 6 e raised to 2 t plus 9 e raised to 4 t. And so by factoring, we can factor our denominator since this is a perfect square trinomial. That is That will be equal to this quantity 1 plus 3e e raised to 2t squared. And transposing this quantity to our numerator and making our exponent negative. So this will be the result. If we are going to differentiate our quantity here, that will be equal to 6e raised to 2t. So we are going to put 6 inside our integral sign and we are also going to put 1 6 outside. So that is 1 6 times the integral of the quantity 1 plus 3e raised to 2t raised to negative 2 times 6e raised to 2t dt. Using the power rule, our quantity will be integrated, so we are going to add 1 to our exponent that will be negative 1 over negative 1. So 1 6 times the quantity of 1 plus 3e e raised to 2t raised to negative 1 all over negative 1 plus c. And then simplifying further, that will be equal to negative 1 over 6 times the quantity of 1 plus 3e e raised to 2t plus c. Since our exponent here on our numerator is negative so we can transpose that to our denominator. Next example that is x cubed plus 3x over x squared plus 1 dx and so factoring out x to our numerator that is x times the quantity of x squared plus 3 and so if we are going to, to separate the quantities of 3 into 2 and 1 in order for us to obtain this binomial in order for us to make a quantity x squared plus 1 on our numerator we are going to put it this way so that is the integral of x times x squared plus 1 plus 2 since 1 plus 2 is 3 that is the same and then separating this quantity and 2x into separate integral sign so that is the integral of x times the quantity of x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1 dx plus 2x since x is outside this quantity so we must multiply 2 by x so that is 2x over x squared plus 1 dx and then cancelling out x squared plus 1 to our first integral that will be the integral of x dx plus 2 integral of 2x over x squared plus 1 dx. And then differentiating x squared plus 1, that will be 2x dx already. So that is already our numerator. And so we are going to use the logarithmic integration. So that is... For this, we, we are going to use the power rule that is x squared over 2, then plus ln of the quantity x squared plus 1 plus c. This is our answer. And so that is it for the second part of the fundamental integration formulas. For your questions, comment on our discussion. And for our next topic, that will be the third part, that will be the integration of the trigonometric functions.